What's up, everybody? It's the Watch and Listen podcast. This is a podcast all about watches with me, Matt Farah, and my co-host, Cameron Weiss, master watchmaker and the CEO of the Weiss Watch Company, making watches from scratch right here in Los Angeles, California, USA, homies. Uh, This episode of Watch and Listen is brought to you by Crown & Caliber. Crown & Caliber is the place to buy a secondhand luxury watch online. Only suckers buy new because watches are like cars. They go out the door. They lose half their value immediately. Unless it's a Rolex, then they gain money. And if you get one of those, that's money in the bank. But they got a lot of Rolexes at Crown and Caliber too. If you want one there, uh, we've got they got Omega, they got AP, they got Vacheron, Constantine, they got all the good brands. They got some micro brands too. Um, they have watchmakers and watch technicians in house to make sure that the watch you get works properly. And if for some reason it doesn't, they offer a limited mechanical warranty on everything they sell. If you get a watch from Crown and Caliber and it ain't working right, they will make it right. Um, I love the people at Crown and Caliber. I have bought now five watches from them, and I've sold four watches to them. You, that's right. If you got a watch you're trying to get out of, trade up, trade down, trade sideways, Crown & Caliber has you covered. Check out the Sell tab on their website and see and let them make you a legit binding offer on your watch. Um You know, buying a watch online can be a shady thing. You know, you never know. Some of these sites, I look on Reddit, and some of these people are like, can I buy from this place? Can I buy from this place? Should I buy from this place? Is this shady? Crown & Caliber, you don't have to worry about that. All the watches are legit. All the watches work the way they should, and uh, and they back it up with a guarantee. Check it out at crownandcaliber.com and use code CAM150, that's C-A-M-150, to get $150 off your first purchase with Crown & Caliber. We are also brought to you by Beeline Coffee. I drink it every morning when I wake up. It is delicious. It is a single-origin micro-batch coffee uh, from all over the world, whether it's Ethiopia or Jamaica or Costa Rica, uh, other places in Central or South America. Uh, man, they do it right at Beeline. My, uh, the, the roasted tire blend is absolutely the most delicious coffee I have ever drank, and I drink a lot of it. Um, use code CHRONO. That's C-H-R-O-N-O, code CHRONO, uh, to get 15% off your entire order at BeelineCoffee.com. Uh, on this episode, uh, Cameron and I talk about the history and watches of Audemars Piguet. We have a very uh, unique perspective because Cameron spent a couple of years working for Audemars Piguet and knows a lot of really interesting tidbits about the brand. Uh, we also have some beautiful pieces from Crown and Caliber in studio, uh, and uh, we go through the history uh, and the ethos and the watches with a side a sidebar into the life of Mr. Gerald Genta, the designer of the Royal Oak. His History of Audemars Piguet on today's episode of the Watch and Listen podcast. Here we go. It is the Watch and Listen podcast, and here we are today. I started with a little song. Hi, Cameron. How's it going? What's happening at the Vice Watch Company? Uh, we are setting up for an open house tonight, but, uh, they're not going to know. They're they're going to know about it later. Yeah. We're going to have, they're going to have to wait until next week to see pictures of the open house on the show. Yeah, that's true. But, uh, we're premiering the, the watch stories that we shot. Yeah, that'll be fun. I did one. Spike did one. Marco did one. Who else did? Did anyone else? I think Uh, it's just those four, right? I think just those four for here in in SoCal. But there's going to be more after last week's show. Rachel from Crown and Caliber was like, Carl Ruiz (laughs) needs a watch story. That'll be a good one. That'll be hilarious. Yeah. Uh, Fully hilarious. (laughs) Um, History of Rolex was really fun last week. Although I have to do a little apology to the audience, our video watching audience. Um, Last week, I think our software might have been acting up a little bit. And some of the things I showed on the screen for us didn't make it into the video. It happened the last two weeks because we recorded the shows back to back on the same, like without restarting the computer or anything. So there's a few folks that were a little annoyed. They might have had to go to Google and get their own images once or twice. So for that, I apologize. But they were all like, you need a producer? No. (laughs) And they were all like, you need new equipment? No. Neither of those things. 
I need to pay a little closer attention. I didn't do the best I've ever done in terms of bringing images over, and I will try to pay. But Carl Ruiz is a fucking distraction. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> that guy's like a ball of fun. Yeah, I felt like I spent more time laughing uh, laughing with oh Carl's uh, jokes. Than He's the best. He's, anytime you do radio, you got to have a fucking Carl Ruiz. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for the, the party tonight, though. It should be a good time. Yeah. We got some watches to give away. That Nova watch we showed on the show, That's the right. railroad watch, we're giving that away. We got gift certificates. It'll be cool. So hopefully, people have, by the time this airs, they've gone home with some prizes. Yeah. Audemar Piguet. This is this is this should be your fucking wheelhouse, bro. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm really happy to do a, an episode that is all AP. I think uh, for me, it's one of the the most important brands. Just, I mean, personally, I love the brand, I love the story, and we'll talk about why I love it so much. Yeah, the, the story itself is. Um, as I was doing research, it's it's a relatively simple story of the history of the company. Yeah, which is nice because a lot of companies were like, we closed, we reopened, <laughs> yeah. we were bought by this person, we were sold to that person. Right. And AP is simple. It is. It's pretty simple. And I think and their their product lineup is also relatively, I mean, not simple in terms of watchmaking, but like they don't make a thousand different watches. They, yeah. They have like four or five models and everything is a little variant on that yeah um so crown and caliber sent us a few i uh, i borrowed a couple from my from a friend and um and uh all the watches almost all the watches you'll see on today's show if you're watching the video will be available at crown and caliber uh by the time this show airs yeah uh shall we yeah 1875 there we go. There it is. 1875. Jules Audemars and Edouard Auguste Piget. Uh, what do you know about these two, Cameron? Uh, both watchmakers. Both watchmakers. Yeah. A company started by two watchmakers. Actual watchmakers. Yeah, and it's like, you know, a lot of those a lot of the watchmakers have like these big egos, right? Then these yeah. guys were able to put that aside and come up with a real constructive partnership. Yeah, yeah. I um one was able to focus on the business side and one focused on the watchmaking and they were able to to make an amazing company. Well, in the beginning, uh you know, they uh, Audemars made a uh, complex sort of movements that he would uh sell as blanks for other companies like Cartier, right, and whatnot. Yeah. And uh Piget was a regulator. That was sort of his deal in the beginning, right? Yes. I will correct you though. It's Piget. What did I say? PJ? PJ. Oh, yeah. it's just P gay. It's P -gay. A hard G. Yeah, hard G. Oh, because there's no U after it, right? Um, P no, there is a U. Uh, P I G U. Audemars Piguet. Yeah, it's Piguet. So right. it's Audemars well, Audemars Piguet is the brand. Uh, but you've got Jules Audemars. Who's who in this photo? Um, on the left is Audemars and on the right is Piguet? I I think uh I think you might have them backwards, but don't, I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure. How we, how will we ever find out? Um, you'd have to Google each one individually. <laughs> they look, this I actually I tried, and this is the picture. That's this, the picture. They only had one picture. Everyone's and it was the two got of them the, together. Yeah, they only ever yeah. were photographed in these outfits together. It's like Leno. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, uh, Piguet eventually became more interested in the business, the marketing, and and sort of focused on that. While Audemars focused on the movements and the complexities, yeah, and they were uh, so they were started up in the the Valley de Joux. Which look at this, how nice is the Valley de Joux? I mean, that is uh, how how do you not want to just go live there? Right, Switzerland. Every picture of Switzerland is the best picture ever taken, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, it's just if you're gonna set up shop, God, I mean, why why not Switzerland? Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous, and imagine sitting like in an upstairs barn in the winter or something, just focusing on a little tiny area, making watches as perfect as possible, as complex as possible, and not thinking about anything else. There's nobody like tapping on your shoulder saying, "We got to get these orders out. We got to yeah. get these orders out." There's no traffic going to work. You're just very simple country life. And uh, you know, this is 1875, so it's uh, probably pretty rural. I'd yes, imagine. Very. But they both grew up in this area. They they stayed local. They didn't like it's not like they grew up in France and then decided, oh, watchmaking is in Switzerland. Let's go. Like they were just locals and set yeah. up where they're local. There are they still there? Yes. They are. They're still in the same place. Um they've taken over multiple buildings on the same street. Uh -huh. So they're in um a, a town called Labrasu, which they're very proud of. It's in all their marketing as well now. Um, but it's a, a tiny little town and it's 
basically all AP now, and then like a cheese shop. Um, what else do you need? Uh, Honestly, I mean, if you've got yeah. a sixty thousand dollar watch and a wheel of Gouda, <laughs> fuck, let's go. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good afternoon, if you ask me. Yeah, it's worth it. I mean, if you go to Switzerland, it's worth going to the valley and driving through. Um, but AP is right there, and you've got like uh, multiple buildings. Some for watchmaking. Some for uh, manufacturing and machining. Some for gem setting. Some for um, they they even have their own building that is just for history. Like so they museum? have a lot of yeah museum. Is um, that is the original building used for anything, or is that the museum? I believe the original building is the museum now. That would make sense. Yeah, yeah. Is it if you go there today, does it feel like a modern company or an old company? Depends on the building. It's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. If you go into um, one of the manufacturing workshops mm-hmm. that is just manufacturing for for case making, it's very like new. The architecture is very new, metal siding and state of the art with like CNC. corrugated steel metal siding. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. really. Uh, like recycled materials kind of thing? Yeah, like, very yeah. advanced looking. And then you can go into the other buildings, which are for the assembly, mm. the assembly of their in-house movements. And it's like all wood and old, kind of styled oh, like a barn um, with big windows looking out into the valley. And it's all beautiful wood benches, very much cool, on the man. other end of kind of old style. My kingdom. I mean, look, I... I California is very pretty. I enjoy living here. I get a nice view from where I live. But something about oh, looking out that window, look up from your desk and just the, then have a Swiss landscape, man, yeah. that's 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 something else. Yeah. So, where are we? In 18 So, I don't really know what happened between 1875 and 1892 except this. They made pocket watches. Complicated pocket watches. And here is a complicated pocket watch from 1880. Very pretty. Lot going on. What's? Can you tell what's happening on this pocket watch here? Well, you've got uh, perpetual calendar. Yeah, which they were known for. Uh, they were actually known for doing perpetual calendars with uh, chronograph. Mm. That was something that they did very early on, uh, and then that led into a grand complication. We uh, we will get to that. Yeah. Yes, we will get to that. But this one here, uh, we've got the perpetual calendar. We've got a minute repeater, so, so this it, one will yeah. actually chime off the time to the minute. It has two different gongs, so you get a high pitched, a low pitch, and you'll have your your hours chimed off in one pitch. Your quarter, dong dong, dong. exactly. Ding, ding. That <laughs> then means you get like, your quarter hours. That was in like what four th- three thirty. Um, dong, I don't know. Dong, 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 ding, ding. That's, that, <laughs> yeah, it yeah. sounds about right. That's 4.30. Yeah, so it's, it's like a grandfather clock chiming off the time, but it's right. exactly when you want it, down to the minute. So in 1892, they made their first minute repeater wristwatch, which I actually could not find a picture of anywhere. Have you seen what one of those looks like before? Uh, that was actually made for another company. Oh. Yeah. Who was it made for? Uh, was that uh, IWC? I don't know. I, I believe it might have been IWC. I could be wrong. but uh, So mm-hmm. Audemars Piguet was very well known for making complex movements. And what they would do is they would make them for other companies and sell them to the other companies that were not so skilled in making the movements. Oh. Uh, I can't. If I just look in Google, uh, a lot of Patek Philippe. So the, the first minute repeater wristwatch, if uh-huh. you search that, you'll that's find out. That's what I just out. did. That's really? A, that's, that's the search. First, I mean, if I go to, let's see, types, history, first, in blah, 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 nah, nah, nah. Uh, I don't know. I got nothing. Oh, uh, was it the Turbion that uh, the Turbion wristwatch that AP created for IWC? Maybe, might have been. But Maybe. anyway, they they were very well known in Switzerland for as the guys that you went to for that complex project. Mm-hmm. If you had a complex watchmaking idea, you could bring it to them. They would make it and sell you the movements. All right. Uh, they then uh, eighteen ninety nine came out with the first grand complication pocket watch. Uh, it had seven complications, and actually, I need I do need you to explain a couple of them to me because I don't actually yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So the seven complications are uh, the grand and the small strike. There's your there's your minute repeater, right? Yeah. Um, an alarm, so it actually had a mechanical alarm clock in it. A perpetual calendar, a deadbeat seconds. What's a deadbeat seconds? Deadbeat seconds means it's going to jump 
So like a ticks. quartz watch, it'll it ticks. Tick. Okay, yeah. instead of instead of a instead smooth of sweeping. Movement. Okay, and uh, and then it has a, a chronograph also with a jumping seconds, which makes more sense now. Yeah, and a split second chronograph. Yeah. So I didn't really know they were doing split seconds that early. That's a go. That's early for split yes. seconds, right? Yeah. That's crazy, and that's in a pocket watch. Um, it would it would be a little while before all that made it into a wristwatch. Yes, it would be a gigantic wristwatch. <laughs> it would be a huge. It'd be like it would be like a today's watch, like a like a grand complication today, right? Um, th- this is more complex than a grand complication today. How big is this thing? Uh, it's quite thick. It's it's like a a big ball on the backside of it. If you oh oh, it's like a it's like spherical yeah, kind of. It's on almost the back? like more a desk. Like you'd have to set oh, it down yeah, on a yeah. desk or something. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're quite large. Oh, cool. That's yeah. neat. Uh, well, they, they don't make it very long because in, uh, in 18, uh, 1918 and 1919, both Audemars and Piguet die within a year of each other. And uh, they leave the company to each of their sons, respectively, that really look uh, a, lot of li- a lot like them. Wait, can we tell who is who here? Who is the son of who? What do you think? Ooh, what? I don't know. That's, uh, let's let's see. see. The hair. Look at the hair. Yeah. And... I th- I think uh, on the right is PK. He yeah, has. They, they might. It looks like these pictures. They put them together put them to the look same in way. the same way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the second generation of uh, of uh, Paul Louis. Uh, is, it, is it Louis? I guess Paul Louis Audemars and Paul. They both named their kids Paul. Yes, which is uh, <laughs> which is weird. Right. <laughs> but uh, but they they took over, uh, and uh, they take over the business in 1925. And then, uh, sorry, in 1918 and 1919. 1925, they come out with the thinnest pocket watch movement ever. It's 1.32 millimeters thick. Thin. That's really thin, right? Extremely thin. Isn't the, aren't like the the current, like the Piaget Altiplanos, like not even that thin? Yeah. So this is thinner. So why is, why were they able to make something thinner a hundred years ago than they can sell now. It's larger in diameter. So, oh, so there's just more room horizontally to put yeah. stuff. Yeah, one of the big things is your mainspring. Uh huh. Making the the mainspring so that it'll actually have enough power. The mainspring is where all the power is stored in a mechanical mm-hmm. watch. So, if you have a larger uh, barrel in diameter, maybe not thickness, you can have a longer spring. Right. Whereas okay. in a wristwatch style. You have limited a on space. limited on space, not only thickness but diameter. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, do you, have you seen one of these super thin uh, pocket I, watches I before in person? No, not one of these. I mean, one point three two millimeters is Very so thin. thin. Yeah. And it looks like it fills out the case too. I'm sorry, this isn't the greatest image, but it looks like it really. Yeah. D- it's like it's it like does... the thinner than a Ritz cracker. <laughs> yeah. I mean, super, 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 yeah. super, super thin. That's really, really neat. I like that a lot. And then in 1934. They create this. I love the first ever skeletonized pocket watch. That thing is awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's just like it's got full glass front, full glass rear, and it's a complicated one too. It's like yeah. not even a basic watch. Yeah, perpetual calendar, perpetual calendar pocket watch. And this one, at least, this appears to be like a normal size too. Yeah, for a pocket not, watch. Not anyway. gigantic. It was actually a, a thin movement as well. Thing is so nice. You know what I really like is this the full skeletonized moon face. Yeah. For some reason that 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 tickles my cockles. Yeah. Um so that's a like a I guess uh I don't know if they did a sapphire dial with those on there. Were they I, making I think, sapphire dials in the 30s? Yeah, and th- it, this could have been hand painted on there. Wow. Or it could have been glass, not not sapphire, but a clear material that is then painted on. Interesting. Yeah. Was in the 30s did they have a real international following, or was yes. it? They did. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because I, the one thing that jumps out at me is that the days are in English. Yeah. On this, they not were in really French, uh, or Swiss or whatever. Is that French? That'd be French, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so they were really well known in the U.S. in very elite circles. Uh-huh. Um, some of the the most complex watches in the world were commissioned by Americans with Patek Philippe and also. Uh, Audemars Piguet. Hmm. So, like, if you were looking at the, the Graves auction that happened a few years ago, uh-huh. a lot of those pieces were Audemars Piguet's that had been specially commissioned for the um, king of whoever, or the or some Hollywood person, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So those were all uh, Henry Graves watches. Um, but oh, what, that's, what would happen that, he, is it was his collection. Yeah, his collection. Okay. 
but what would happen can, is you're you know you've that. got one rich guy who gets a super complicated watch and it's the thinnest watch or whatever and he shows it to somebody else and then they bring that to a company and they go, I want it thinner. I want it thinner than his oh, watch. Oh, yeah. It's, or like, I want it's it with, like a keeping up yeah. with the Joneses thing. Add another complication. I want one yeah. more complication than he had. So, Let me see if I can find a Henry Graves collection. This one's very complex. Whoa. That's a, Wait, hang on. I'll, let me make sure I get the image right so all the folks can see it. Okay. All right. Here we go. So this is a Henry Graves uh, pocket watch. So, Jesus. Dial on the front and this dial on the back. This is two sides of one yeah. watch. So you've got your seven complications, 20 complications on one side, twenty on just one side, right? Or no, no twenty no, no, total. No, no, okay, no, no, yeah, no, no. So you've twenty got, total. Wow, can you? I can't read yeah. that off. Can you read off the list there? Um, first is the star chart over New York City. <laughs> Second, minutes of uh, uh, side real time. What time what is of a sunset? Minute? Wait, 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 wait. What is a minutes of side real time? So you have kind of like on this one here. Uh-huh. The uh, equation of time. Which we will get to later, yeah. Which we will get to. So you've got your solar time, your mean time. Okay. Uh, and, and that's the, the difference. The equation of time is going to be the difference. So you have oh, multiple wow. different uh, times on there. Okay. Only one corresponds to the time that we follow on Earth in society. Right. So there's other times that relate okay. to the sun and the stars. I'm, con- and, I'm so confused. Yeah, so uh, exactly. Number three is, what does it say? Uh, three is going to be the time of the sunset. Uh, and this is for New York City. So, so whoever so that, this, this, th- Henry this Graves, little subdial here will only show that these hands will stay on whatever the sunset will be that, for that day. day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So then you've got uh, your uh, the seconds uh-huh. of the side real time. Okay. Equation of time, which is going to be the difference between solar and uh, and mean, and then you've got your. There was the hours the sunrise sun. as well. Uh huh. Um, the hours for that moon phase and age of the moon, split second hand. So that's a chronograph uh-huh. with a split second, sixty uh, minute register up and down. Which is wait, your, a sixty minute register is just minutes, right? Isn't uh, that just your minutes, like your normal minute time. Sixty minute register for the chronograph. Oh, okay, for right. the chronograph. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up down is going to be your power reserve. Oh they yeah, wait. wait up, up, where's up down? Eleven is up down. Yeah, That's up, down, in one. the middle here, right? It's in the center of this dial because ten, ten is the sixty minute register. That's the outside. The res- power reserve is the inside. Yes, on that little hand. Oh wow! Then you've got your your month. date function. So month. Uh, you've got the minutes of the meantime, the seconds of the meantime, the date. You have an alarm. Wow. Day hours of day, meantime. Yeah. Up to, oh, and then you have a separate, separate barrel, yeah. a separate for barrel chiming. for the chiming. Wow! What would something like this have cost? Um, that wow, that's a good question. Millions, what it would have cost? Right? I mean, in today's I mean, back money, then, in today's money, in millions. today's money, it was probably a few million dollars. Could you uh, could you today get AP to make you this if you wanted to? They must have a special ops division somewhere that. So Paddock, you can still order one of these. Really? Not this pocket watch, but you can get a similar. They make a wristwatch. Yeah. That is does that that has a lot of this. It's a newer movement, um, but so crazy. based on the same thing. Yeah. It's really hard to tell time on it. <laughs> right. You want to actually just tell time? Yeah. It's just that's just a just an absurd. You know, feat of of engineering. I mean, that's that's some real next level shit. Yeah. Wow. All right. Please be, keep bringing those up. That's nuts. <laughs> uh, where were we? Ah, yes, the thinnest. Nineteen fifty seven. Oh, sorry, nineteen forty six. The thinnest wristwatch ever. Very. It, this particular one is from the six. I couldn't find a picture of one from the forties. This, I presume, is the same or similar model they made in the sixties. Yeah. So this movement, mm. an American nickel. Is about the size of this movement, wow. this mechanical movement. That's it's a hand wound, I imagine, yeah. right? Yeah, that's amazing. And then in 1957, the uh, first perpetual calendar wristwatch, which I think this thing's real cool. Yeah, I like this thing very much. And what else? Um, what is? How does this, this leap year thing? This gauge just moves once a year. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and it just tells you yeah. when the leap year is coming. Yeah. In order to set it, you need to know. When the leap, if if the watch, what year it's on uh-huh. within the four years for a leap year. Oh, so, so this if you don't know what year you're in, ha- so my yeah. IWC has the year. Yes. this doesn't have the actual year. It just tells you whether you're on or 
how many uh, years away from a leap year you are. Yeah, and it's mainly used for just setting the watch. Mm. Um, I don't think too many people are looking at it going, oh, in three years we have a leap year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it's mainly for setting the watch because you want to make sure that if it's not a leap year, you don't want to set it as yeah. if it's a leap year. Interesting. Yeah. Do you find it interesting that they used like a pretty significant amount of dial space for that? I yeah, think that's usually, strange, don't you? Usually now it's hidden mm. in one yeah, of I the figured, dials. I figured it would be either like on the inside of the month's dial or something, or like on the back of the watch, maybe. Yeah. Does that equation of time have one? No, that's got. Uh, it. What do we have? The perpetual here. Does the perpetual have it? Um, yes. So you'll see on the perpetual. So it will. It's gonna on. be. Oh, I haven't calibrated the 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 screen just yet. Can you turn Ooh. down the brightness on that screen on the yeah, camera? With that white there dial. we go with the white dial. So you see at the and top hit, and hit 12. Focus, hit focus. Yeah, look at that. Oh, oh, and it just went away. There it is. There we go. Okay. So at the top near oh, 12, yeah. you've got that tiny little hand, mm-hmm. super stubby hand. Zoom in. Yep. And it you have four uh, four sectors yeah. on there. Yeah, L, 1, 2, 3. Exactly. Oh, how about that? Cool. And that's a current uh, Royal Oak perpetual calendar. Yeah. We will get to Royal Oak, believe me. 80% of this company is fucking Royal Oak <laughs> yeah. af- after about 30 seconds from now. <laughs> um, but uh this is a this is a really beautiful watch. I bet you this uh I bet you this perpetual this original perpetual costs a fortune today. What is this bottom hand here doing? Is this a That one's your running seconds. Oh okay. So the, it only right? shows you half of the dial. Or See, do you notice this no, is 29 you know and a half? What is that? Yeah, what? So, what is that? So 29 and a half, that's going to be your moon, the cycle of the moon. Oh. Yeah. And then so so the this bottom one would be maybe a, a second hand, right? Or is this a se- the main hand a second hand? No, hand? no, that's going to be your, your day of the month. Oh, it's a the, pointer the date. date. Yeah, pointer date. Yeah, so it's date, a pointer right. date. And then you've got your, uh, your day of the week on the left-hand side near uh-huh. nine, the month on the right-hand side near three. And then I'm pretty sure that's just a running seconds indicator. Uh-huh. Cool. This seem, this one seems yeah. like it's seen some uh, some use. Actually. Yeah. Uh, excellent. Now we get to we we basically skip right over the sixties to nineteen seventy two, uh, the Swiss watch show now known as Basel World. Um, the directors of AP decide that what they need is a luxury sport watch. I guess the uh, popularity of what steel Rolexes and stuff like that. As are they see they see room in the market between the super fancy schmancy and what at the time was a nice tool watch maybe yeah the so the idea was a company like Audemars Piguet was making everything out of precious metals and it was all about the decoration and the finishing mm. and at back at that time it's like why would you take stainless steel and finish it spend all this extra money and energy finishing stainless steel to look beautiful when it's a cheap product to begin with. Yeah. So nobody was really doing it, and they thought, well, let's polish and finish steel like gold, like it is jewelry, um, where no other company was really doing that at that time. Was it a special kind of steel, or is it just the regular old stainless steel? Same stainless steel you would have found in a Rolex. But, I mean, look at... Yeah, all of the facets on the bracelet. Right. So what basically where what they did was they called this guy Gerald Genta, a legendary designer. I have a whole little side piece here about Gerald Genta because the the future of AP pretty much hinges on this guy. Yeah. Um. They call him, and he is uh he at this point has worked at Universal Genève, uh, and he has uh, come up with other watches, including the Omega Constellation, the Paddock Golden Ellipse, uh, and other ones he will do after. But he apparently sketches the Royal Oak in one day. And they come up with the design for the Royal Oak in one day. According to historians. Yeah. Do we have, which one do we have here? We got a couple we got a bunch of Royal Oaks, but Yeah, should we put uh we'll let's start put a with start one. with the basics. I'll I'll throw this up. Here's the original, nineteen seventy two uh AP Royal Oak. Basic, really iconic shape. How we have this one's a newer one, I guess, but same basic idea? Yeah. So with this watch, important to know, there are two versions, really. There's the um, what what's referred to as the Jumbo, because it uh-huh. was a large watch at the time, which was 39 millimeters. Yeah. The Jumbo was actually the thin version of this watch okay. now. So it's a little weird. They call it the Jumbo. And now, what, now what's the bigger one now? The bigger one is this one that I've got in my hands, it has an in-house Audemars Piguet automatic movement. 
it's not the ultra thin movement that was originally developed with JLC. Okay. So the original movement, the t- the AP movement is the 2120. Vacheron also uses the same ultra thin movement because they developed it with JLC and AP. Uh, and they call it the 1120. Okay. Um, JLC also still makes that caliber. Uh, but that's the ultra thin automatic, thinnest centrally wound automatic movement in production. All right, and uh, this, but this original one from set was a hand wound, right? Oh no, no it says automatic. Automatic. On it. What am I doing? So I the should, original one has better. that ultra thin. It's the thinnest automatic central okay. rotor movement at the time, or still now? Still now. Oh wow! I yeah, realize at the time now, and man, it's a it's a really good looking watch. Although it seems in between then and now they've added a second hand. The other one, the old one didn't have it. On the current jumbo, uh-huh. there's no second hand. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. it's this movement, which is a new, well, not that new anymore, but it's a newer automatic movement that Automer Piguet has uh, started producing. Yeah. And it has the second hand and the date. It also has the quick set date, whereas the jumbo, the ultra thin, you does have to go not all have, the way around the month to yeah, set it. So no no quick set and no central seconds. Uh, but it's the original one. If you're that guy that well, wants to have the original Well, aren't the original ones worth style, like a lot of money? They are worth a lot of money now. Cuz wasn't tell, what didn't a lot of dials get replaced or something like that or a pl- yeah. something applied got replaced. So what happens is the uh the Do dials were actually here? yeah. So on these you can kind of see in the center underneath where it says automatic. Mm-hmm. These dials are the petite tapestry dials and they are cut on a machine kind of like a rose engine it's different though in the way that it's making the pattern Um, but that style of manufacturing is used to make the dial and then they use a galvanic treatment to actually galvanized exactly they're galvanizing the dials to add this color okay and it was like a a grayish blue color and it would start to fade and kind of maybe come off a little bit but it, they really just faded into like a gray, and then sometimes you see a little bit of the brass from yeah, the like dial. Yeah, there's some like poking through. through here. Yeah, and Audemars Piguet started replacing them. Could even see this is the same thing Rolex did. Like when when you have something that is a quote error, and a majority of the people get annoyed and come in and have them fixed. Yeah, the ones that don't get fixed become worth a ton of money. Yeah, yeah. So what happened was, uh, AP had. The logo, the applied logo. This would be an original here, yeah? Exactly. Yeah. So what they did is they actually changed it. They moved the logo up. And what that does is you see the hour hand, which is very low to the dial, it's an Uh ultra-thin watch, would hit this AP. It would actually come into contact with it. If it was not perfectly made. Okay. On the replacement dials they used, it did not have the AP at 6 o'clock there where it could hit the, oh. uh, the hour hand. It was moved up. So, so out, totally dial, out of the way. Yeah, so it, it looks very different, mm-hmm. and that's one of the ways you can tell if it's not an original dial. It's still that's, an AP dial, yeah. still a, a watch that's worth something, but no, on but these the ori- ones, Yeah, the yeah. original is, is the way. Obvi- obviously, yeah. that's the one that's going to be the huge money. But now on the current model, they've moved the AP back, and it's, it's back to the way it should be. Neat. Yeah. Uh, sidebar... Gerald Genta, uh, where uh, Gerald Genta, after designing the Royal Oak, he went on to design the IWC Ingenieur, the Paddock Nautilus, and the Cartier Pasha, uh, and then he ventured out on his own and started in 1969, starting Gerald Genta watches, making shit like this. Yeah, crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Uh, this is this is a grand sonnerie, which even more than a minute repeater, it doesn't chime the time; it chimes a song. Yeah, like an yeah. actual song. So there's like a player piano in there, um, and apparently you can maybe you could confirm he he made this watch or these sonnery watches with no suppliers. Uh, he, it claimed anyway that they that he made these watches with no parts suppliers and he made every part and the whole watch by himself. Wow, that's what he said. They said up to five years to make one, uh, and they were eight hundred thousand to two million in the seventies. Unbelievable. Have you ever even have you ever seen one of these in person? I have never seen one in person. No. I, I've never seen one in person. I'd love to. I have to. seen some of the Bulgari stuff now. Yeah. Um in yeah. person, which his company was bought by them, right? His company was bought yeah. by Bulgari uh, in nineteen ninety nine and then and Gerald Genta died in twenty eleven. Yeah. But I, I never I, saw any of his stuff in person, but 
unbelievable, really cool designs. It's real crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I mean, this, this just like it's skeletonized dial, but like every tiny little part has an absurd level of finish deed and like multiple textures on yeah. every part. Like, Cameron, maybe you could tell me, like, just what would it take to make just this little tiny thing with these different textures on it? Well, I mean, first you have to make the part. Yeah. Then you've got all this chamfering on the edges. That's what That's it's called. all high polished. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you've also got a high polish in the jewel sink here. And this is a tourbillon right there. So this is actually supporting the tourbillon uh, carriage. Then you've got this high, like a probably a flat polish on the top surfaces, all the lines. Yeah. And you've also got this other finish that's within there. It's actually it's like a rough cut out. Cut. And you see, I'm, I'm not sure how they were doing this, but it's got sharp corners. So I don't know how exactly he like was cutting that in there. Like what machine you would cut that with that would also make a sharp corner. Yeah. Like unless he was experimenting with lasers at that time. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if he was, but... Maybe some sort of like uh, hand tooling where he was actually making those like a little chisel, marks like with a, a chisel. Tiny chisel, yeah, and doing like uh, kind of that sand blasted look with a tiny little chisel. That's so crazy. Yeah. And when you know we're we're zoomed into full screen right now, that's a that piece is like a quarter inch. That whole piece, maybe. Yeah, smaller <laughs> than that. Is it? Let's yeah. go back. It's a little piece. Yeah, it's that's a small piece. That's yeah. so crazy. Gerald Gent is a boss. Our friend Marco Girassi, who we're going to see at the uh, thing tonight at the open house, he has amassed not not a Gerald Genta brand, but all the other Gerald Genta watches that he made for other people, yeah. he has collected. That's like his thing. And Gerald Genta, he was not scared to do weird, wacky designs. Like, look at how steampunk this case is. Yeah, I wish I knew when this watch was made. I, right? I don't know exactly when this one was made, but... It's crazy. Yeah. Super, super crazy. Gerald Gent is a boss. He a boss. Uh, then we jump forward to the late 1980s and uh, the Royal Oak Offshore, the yes. world's first oversized watch. What do you know about the Offshore other than everything, Cameron? <laughs> so the Offshore, one of the, the really interesting things about it was the rubber, all the exposed rubber. Yeah, well, this got, this particular uh, does this this one only has does this have it on the on the the buttons? Is that with rubber? Yeah, or so about rubber bezels later. No, no. So you've actually got rubber on the buttons and on the crown, but if you look at the side profile, mm. you can see the gaskets. Can't you kind of isn't, can't you see this gasket poking out right here? Exactly. You, if you look on the side, you'll see that gasket poking out from beneath the bezel. Yeah. So um, not designed by Genta, designed by Emmanuel Givet. How do you pronounce Gu um, Gu Gu Guye? I don't, I don't know G -U -E -I -T. His, uh, his last name. It's G-U-E-I-T. Guye? I don't know. I don't know, but it, it basically... Emmanuel G, G, we will call him. Manny, Manny G. Manny G. Manny G takes a, takes a hand to this thing, and uh, it basically was designed to handle more extreme conditions. Not yeah. necessarily diving, but uh, yachting so and such, maybe? The The goal was to actually... Make a watch where water could not get into the crevices mm -hmm. uh, be between the bezel and case back and things like that. So the gasket goes all the way to the edge. Imagine if you had your case back touching and you had a little gap where the O-ring, kind of outside the O-ring, but underneath the case back, mm -hmm. salt water could get in there and corrode. And you'll see that on a lot of vintage Rolexes. They have... Tons of corrosion underneath the lip on the case back uh -huh. or underneath the bezel yeah. where you cannot clean. It's just impossible to clean unless you bring it to a watchmaker. So a lot of them have pitting, even in the stainless steel. So they came up with this idea of have the gasket go all the way to the edge. Yeah, you're going to see it, but that could be a cool styling, uh, like style to the watch as well. Yeah. So the gasket goes all the way to the edge. And this is one of the reasons that they have an actual patent on the look of that bezel. Huh. Because the look and the construction are tied together. Are the same thing. So they could actually patent it. So if you have an, a watch with an eight-sided bezel that is held down with a nut and bolt system showing the gasket like this, you're actually infringing on their uh, patent. How interesting. And then, you know, the Royal Oak Offshore has spun off many other uh, uh, designs. 
uh, or many, uh, excuse me, variants, let's call them. Now, two th- the year 2000, and we'll get to some of those in a minute. Uh, now, the year 2000, the equation of time. And uh, we actually have one here in studio, and it's notably different from the one you see here on the screen, which uh, says, you can see on the bottom, says, New York, 11 hours, 55 minutes. The one in studio, and I will zoom in for you, says, Sarasota, 12 hours, 30. So why would one say New York, and why would one say Sarasota? So in this watch, you've actually got a custom... There's a few parts that are custom, depending on where you're located. Um... And these parts actually have to do with your equation of time, sunrise, sunset features. So if you could imagine... uh, Yeah, what's really cool about this, just to to jump in, is that they have... Wait, don't move it, Cameron. uh, Is that you actually... They still have this sunset and uh, sunrise uh, time, which I guess are, in theory, accurate every day, right? Yeah. If you're in Sarasota, Florida. (laughs) If you're not in Sarasota, Florida, what do you do? Uh, so this watch, <laughs> when you buy one of these watches, yeah, they make it for you. Uh, when I worked there, you could change it once. Once, so with no additional fee. It so could like, be different if now. I, I buy one and I move from Sarasota to L.A., exactly. they would reset it for me yeah. at no charge once. At no charge once, and that could have changed. It could be totally different now. Uh huh. Um, but anyway, you can get it reset. Okay. By sending it in for a service and purchasing the new cams. Uh, they basically plug in your your longitude, latitude for what city you're in, and that will determine the shape of the cams. That's so crazy. Yeah. So like, but this one is at Crown and Caliber, right? Yes. So so, I don't live in Sarasota. Exactly. I want that watch. I want to send now. I send it in. And so yeah, you'd send it in to, to Audemars Piguet. Yeah. And you'd tell them where you want it set for. So you're gonna have to get yourself a new dial ring on there. Yeah. Exactly, because that's going to be different. Will they? Will they do it? I mean, anywhere you want. Like, yeah. Like, what if I live in some small hick town? Anywhere. Like, they'll put it anywhere you want. Yeah, they'll put anywhere you want. That's fucking rad. Yeah, you could set it to the coordinates of your house. Yeah. You could set it like any anything, whatever you want. Um, which is really cool, especially if it's cool. But God, is that hard to sell? I mean. Yeah. Because the next, because uh, whoever buys it, I mean, I don't even want to know. What exactly. Is one, do you know one of these costs? Uh, I. I think it's a hundred twenty-five thousand is the the retail on oh it. Oh my god, it's got to be twenty to have it changed, right? <laughs> I would it's imagine not, you're gotta... looking at a f- a full overhaul, yeah, to the tune of maybe twenty five hundred dollars, uh-huh. and then you're probably looking at a few thousand dollars in parts. Wow. So you got to commit. This yeah. is a lifetime commitment yeah. watch. If you're scared to commit, you're probably safe picking New York and just. You know, That's like, true. Pick a major, yeah, you know, pick, pick a, a, major pick a city, New York, a London, a or a Geneva, place, yeah. or something, and you could probably. I bet you could get away. Like, here's a question for you: I buy this thing in L.A. It says New York. Will it give me the? Will it do anything right if oh, I'm yeah, in the yeah. wrong city? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what it, will it, it still do works? Right? Will so it, you've still got your perpetual calendar. Uh-huh. You've got your equation of time, which is useless anyway. Right. So the equation of time, by the way, is the hand with the with the sunburst on it. Yeah. It's easier to see in this photo because the hand is pointing at nine o'clock. It's a little overlapping in our in studio one. Um. So that hand becomes useless. Yeah. But you so, can still tell normal time, right? Yeah, and I mean the equation of time is pretty useless anyway. It's of just course. a. Yeah. It, it's really an emotional kind of thing. Um, it's but complexity really, so, for complexity's sake. Yeah, it's it's the difference between actual uh, solar time and the time that we go by. Mm. Uh, so you know the sun's not always at its highest point at noon based on our clocks. Right. So there's a difference between that, and it, it's either up or down, about 15 minutes a day. Mm. So there's a cam for that. Uh, but the sunrise sunset is a useful complication that you'd want to be able to use i actually am a fan of sunrise sunset that's like that's a cool one to have right i mean granted you know you get it off your phone now but it's pretty badass yeah it's a pretty especially if you are a you know sailor photographer yeah you know you know there's there's a lot of a lot of things for which anything i I know i look it up uh to go surfing except i'm looking for dawn i need first right i I look it up i looked it up this morning to get up to go in the canyons and film film a car so like it for me that's actually a pretty cool thing to have yeah um very very neat stuff that's a i mean but man is that a commitment 
<laughs> yeah. You really got, I, when I uh, when I worked for Audemars Piguet, they had one watchmaker in the U.S. Who could working work on, on these. these. <sighs> yeah. How old was he? Um, <laughs> he he was actually a younger guy. I think he might have been uh, in his late thirties. All right, you're safe. You're safe yeah. for a little while. Yeah. Is something like this like? As a watchmaker, if you're servicing this stuff, like, is there one, you know, this is a very complicated watch, but so is a perpetual and so yeah. is a split second chronograph. Like, is there one type of complication that's like way more difficult to service than another? Or is it all just gears and wheels and doesn't matter once you've got the thing open? It's not so much the difficulty. Once you get into complex watches, it's not necessarily the difficulty. It's having the right tools and mm. knowing how to use them. Uh, just like a, a mechanic yeah. could be a great mechanic and understand everything about an engine, but when he gets into a Mercedes shop yeah, if he doesn't and have Mercedes special has that Mercedes special tool tools, that, yeah. that he's never used before, yeah. he might break something the first time just totally. because he's never tried it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Oh, wait. Oh, we have we have found some extras. Okay. Uh, now we can just... I, can, I, I, I couldn't find all the variants of the Royal Oak Offshore, but there are... There's a lot. A lot. <laughs> There's a lot of random special editions uh, from the for the offshore, different strap and bezel combinations. Shack got one inexplicably. <laughs> yeah, and the uh, Shack, the Shack ones. The sh- I have the Shack the, one. Wait, uh, the Ruben, Arnold, Ruben's Barrichello. Here's the Shack one. Yes. What did Shack do for an AP? Why why did Shack get an AP watch? So what they would do is they would get together and they'd come up with a limited edition like this. And then they would actually donate a lot of the, the money oh. to a fund. So Shaq had, um, I think it was like Shaq's Kids or something like that, yeah. an organization where they were actually helping kids. Um, so they would donate a lot of the money to his organization, which is a pretty cool thing to do. I mean, not only do you make a limited edition watch and some people get to really have something special, but... Yeah. The money's also going to something good. Yeah, but they did that a lot with a lot of different. Uh, well, yeah, watches. I mean, here, here's some, here's some special editions: Shaq, Rubens, Barrichello, uh, Leo Messi, LeBron James, Rory McIlroy, Sebastian Buemi. You know, all these guys get yeah. their own. special Not all edition. of those ended up having charities attached to them, <laughs> no. but I know Shaq did. Shaq, well, good for Shaq. Yeah. He's got the money. Um, and you know, it's different colors and different. You know, I got one as a demo from Crown and Caliber a couple months ago that had a, the rubber bezel, which we talked about because yeah. apparently um, the rubber bezel is one of those things that seems durable and functional, but if you damage it, it's actually like a real problem. Yes. <laughs> so to explain that to me because so, – let's go over that again. So on the um, the rubber clad is what they call it. I'm the gonna rubber get, I'm clad gonna grab a picture of it while you're going has here. a rubber-coated metal bezel. It also has the rubber crown, and it has the rubber pushers. Uh, the thing about the bezel is that it's a very complex bezel to make just in the beginning. So it's a very expensive part, and then they rubber coat it. If you chip the rubber, they cannot put the rubber back on. So you have to get a new bezel. Yikes. And if you have this in steel, okay, 1500 bucks I think, is the price for the new bezel. Not too bad. Yeah, if that's a you lot, have, but... If you have the gold rubber clad... Underneath the rubber is gold. It's like solid gold? Solid gold under the rubber. Oh my god. So then you're looking at Is there at anything a very dumber than one. having a solid gold thing that's covered and so you can't see the gold? Right? It's uh it's, it's one of those things where it's like we spare no expense. Yeah. Like luxury all the way. We're not gonna put a less expensive metal just because you can't see it. It's so it's, crazy. Yeah. I mean I but bet that's you- a very pricey watch. I just think I think those two I think the concept of the Royal Oak offshore rubber clad and the concept of gold are at odds with each yes. other. There's ju- but so was the stainless steel jewelry watch a good point. when they created it. That's a very good point, Cameron. You know, that's kind of their thing is like we mastered this and now we're gonna go crazy and, mm-hmm. and make something weird and wacky and see if it works. And uh, like we discussed with Chef Carl the other day, the sunken date window there. Yes. It's behind the dial. Mm-hmm. And there's like a magnifier inside the dial. Is that Would that be accurate? That they exactly. That right? There's a The dial is a thick dial, and there's a magnification glass inside the dial. Yeah. So that you can actually look through the, uh, the chronograph module, and the date ring is kind of deep in there on the actual movement. So you're looking through the chronograph module down to the date ring. It's, a, I mean, it's a kind of a neat uh, solution. Yeah, 
I, I think it's strange that the font doesn't match the the dial. That that's a little annoying, but yeah. Uh, but you know, I had I actually this watch we're showing here the steel is the one I got as a demo, and I I thought it was all right. I didn't love it. The more I put on the regular Royal Oaks, the standard Royal Oaks, not I really like them. Yeah, we have some there. Actually, you want to should we should we break out some watches? Yeah. Where do you want to start? We, um, we showed the traditional Royal Oak. I just took right, off the perpetual. We got perpetual. that white dial. Let's do the chronograph. This All one, right. people love the chronograph. And this is a blue dial as this well. This one belongs Gorgeous. to my friend Nick. And it is hot. He just got it. I think I think this thing's like 15 or 18 grand new. Uh, maybe even a little more. I think it's 21. Is it 21? Yeah. Oh, all right. Maybe it's more. Um, can, you wanna, can you lighten the camera a little bit? Yeah. It's a little dark. Because the blue dial is is really nice in that one. I like how this watch fits. It's got a great size right. dial. Yeah. It's it nice. really hugs the wrist nicely because yeah. the bracelet, and it's a lot, you look at all the angles on the bracelet and it seems like maybe that might be uncomfortable, yeah. but it's really comfortable. No, you, and I think, you know what's weird? I have like super hairy Arab arms <laughs> and people ask me all the time about arm hairs getting caught. The bracelet? It, it has literally never happened to me. Yeah. Has it, does that ever happen to you ever? Um, it hasn't happened to me, no. Who is it? Who is what kind of awful watches are these people wearing where their arm hairs know, are getting right? caught in the bracelets? But like yeah. with the Rolex Jubilee or a Steel or one of these, like it's never happened. Yeah. Um But that's I think this is a this is a beautiful watch. And then go to the, the perpetual is so fire. Does that have a display back actually? The it does. Can we take a look? Uh, no, not the chronograph. Oh, not the, chrono. the chronograph does not. So is this the is chronograph the, an in-house movement? It is not an in-house movement. So who makes that movement? Frederick Piguet. Oh, very right. nice, very nice chronograph. Yeah, um, something you'll see in a lot of uh, Vacherones as well. Mm-hmm. You'll oh, is that see the, it, the overseas same same movement. It was until this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vacheron came out with an in-house chronograph for the overseas. Is that good or bad? Uh, we don't know yet. Good. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll after see service wise. After your you know? first service, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's a great movement, um, and I it looks beautiful. The construction is gorgeous, but we'll save that for the Vacheron show. Okay. Oh, we should do a Vacheron show at some <laughs> right? point. Yeah, yeah. This one, this thing is rad. Yeah. And this is a white dial perpetual calendar. Hit hit the focus button there, buddy. Yeah, give us a little love on that. This thing is sweet, dude. Yeah. This is the this dial is silver or white? Silver? Uh this is a silver slash white? I think this is the silver dial. This thing is expensive. Yeah. Did uh, that go out of focus now? Yeah, because you moved it. Okay, you there can, we go. It's back, right? It. All right. Um I just was wearing this for the first half of the show and it's awesome. It's got a great weight to it. It's like a good size. Like for a perpetual to not be giant, that's yes. awesome. Well, this is Built upon their ultra thin automatic movement. So, is there a mod, a perpetual module on it? A uh, little bit of a module. Some of the main movement parts are actually different to accept it. Uh, okay. But you look in the back and you can see that ultra thin movement. I really like the um, the the winding weight on it. I like how it's yeah. like a cutout. So, another cool thing you can do with Audemars Piguet, they'll actually put your initials in that if you'd like. That's awesome. Until you so, want to sell it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But what you could do is like, you, you take Steve? the uh, you take the regular uh, oscillating weight, yeah. you keep it, and you could have. Oh, will they send you? Will they send you a standard weight too? You should be able to get the standard weight and then have one engraved. That's pretty cool, yeah. actually. But I, I've seen that. a few engraved. I mean, that's ones. way cooler than engraving the case back. Yeah, that's like some next level shit. Yeah, and it's really nice hand engraving. Um, I've seen a few really beautiful ones. You know who else does that? Um, RGM will engrave your initials into the into, into, the, the, into the rotor or the, yeah. on the bridge or something like that. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool to to get it on the movement. This thing looks great from the back. Yeah, I really like the uh, the relief cut. Is that is that a correct term? Yeah, it says exactly. Royal Oak in relief there. Yeah, that's that's just badass. And that thing has got. I gotta find out Royal Oak Perpetual. For sale. I got to find out how much these things go for. I don't have. I'm sorry. I don't have the um, the crown and caliber invoice right now. So oh, this, oh, is that it? No, no, that's the chronograph. That's the chronograph. Is that it in a different color? Yep, different color. Yeah, sixty used. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, sixty G's, man. You know, just put put the the perpetual and the chronograph side by side under that camera real quick for a second, because just from a just for a from a a flashiness 
show offiness perspective, right? I mean, I know, I know, and you know, and our super, our nerdy people know the difference between the left and the right. Yeah. But if you're walking down the street, you know what I mean? Even a watch guy, even, I, you know, you're walking down the street wearing one of those two, and I see, I go, that's a Royal Oak. That's nice. You know, it's, ooh, there's something, there's, there's extra button. Other, I guess, other than the side buttons, the pusher buttons, but like, Man, does one of those look like triple the other one? Like, woo! All right. I, I actually look at this, and I think when I see the Royal Oak on someone's wrist, mm-hmm. I'll notice if it's a chronograph. That's what More you notice? because of the I'll pushers? notice if it's a perpetual. Because of the pushers? Because of the pushers, yeah. yeah. What, do you, what comes to your mind if you think? If I see someone with, a, with an AP Royal Oak, I go, ooh, that, they know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I actually think it's... Um, you know, in Beverly Hills right now, you see a lot of like the Armenian guys, and they're all wearing Nautiluses. Oh yeah, but I think I think this is a prettier watch than the Nautilus. Actually, a lot of hype on the Nautilus right now, but I think the Royal Oak's a prettier watch. Yeah, I I think the Royal Oak stands out more. I love the, I love the strap on the Royal Oak is just rad. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, before we move, oh, we got a gold Royal Oak too. Yes, on, a, on leather. Go ahead. Talk. And one one huh? interesting thing about Audemars Piguet, so. This is a gold one on leather. Uh-huh. If you get a metal bracelet AP, mm-hmm. you will not be able to switch it to a leather strap. Why? It's not possible. It just doesn't come off? So it does come off. Can you hit but... the focus button? We're a little out of focus here. Uh, yeah, it comes off, but... <laughs> you it's Completely different lug design different, or something? Different fitment. Okay. And they wouldn't sell you the parts even if if they did fit. So is the case itself different if you get a metal or a, or a, a leather bracelet? It has to do with the elements they call them, uh-huh. which are those two little pieces of metal that connect the bra- the wow. strap to the case. How interesting! I did yeah. not know that at all. So a lot of times people would come in and they'd be like, "Whoa, I, I see the one in the case with a leather strap. Can I get my Royal Oak that has the bracelet? Can I put a leather strap on it?" And it's like, "No, it no." Doesn't. We it doesn't fit, or we don't know what part numbers would would make it happen. Oh, how about that? Yeah, That's so interesting. I did not know that. Yeah, but but the offshores which come on the rubber, you can change. The those. offshores yeah. can change. Yeah, not the Royal different. Oak. Oh, very few Royal Oaks come on a leather strap because of that reason. Yeah, can you can you go one way? Like you can't go the other way. Like you could if you have a metal, you can't put a leather on. Switching is very tough. There's okay. very few where there's an option to switch, and they're not going to make it easy yeah. because they don't want you to create a watch that didn't exist. True. From yeah, the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So could you even? Bu- you can't even buy a metal bracelet, then, can you? It either comes on a watch or it doesn't. You can buy a metal bracelet for a metal watch, a metal okay. bracelet watch, like a replacement. Like one. if it's damaged yeah. or something. Didn't you tell me it was extraordinarily expensive to buy a metal bracelet from them? Yeah, like, it would be quite expensive. Didn't the someone, bracelet has didn't a lot. Say of- a link was a thousand bucks or something. Like one link was a thousand bucks. Didn't we get it that? It wouldn't from surprise me if one stainless steel link was pretty close to a thousand. <laughs> yeah. So crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. We got some other watches that are not Royal Oaks. Yeah, we have a couple of millinaries. Yeah, so the so, millinary yeah. actually let's let's explain this one because we showed it. The okay. this one is the Jewel Audemars case. Yeah, so it's the Jules Audemars case is exactly. round case. Yeah, pretty it's much. the round, dressier style. They they don't have a lot of styles. You have Royal Oak, you have Jules Audemars, and then you you've got this other one, the Millinery. Yep. Which so I will not be able to stop myself from going. Wow, that's ugly. To me, that's an that is an ugly watch to me. This one, I don't mind the case shape. I'm not a fan of this dial. What is going on in this watch? It's like a it like it's like a Star Trek watch or something. Yeah, well, the shape of this watch uh-huh. is not the shape of any movement. Correct. So the movement is kind of off to the right side, and then there's an empty space in the case where there's a spacer ring. And but the movement is just a round movement, right? Yeah. Yeah. Round yeah, okay. movement. Exactly. Um, uh, this one was they, a, a limited edition Torado. But anyway, well, is it? A, it's a it's a chronograph. Yes, chronograph. Okay. Yeah, chronograph. So this will have that same Frederick Piguet, um, the eleven eighty five movement in there. I genuinely don't. I don't get the appeal of this one. So there's another watch, the Millinery. Um, gosh, I I used to know every single uh, number. 
but if you type in millinery, this one right here. This one? Yeah. Okay. Coming. Coming at you. Give me a second. So this Whoa, millinery. What, is, what do we got going on here? This 15350. Mm-hmm. So the model is the 4101. Yeah. The millinery Sorry, 4101. Caliber. Yeah. This has an in-house movement that is that exact shape, and they actually flipped the balance wheel so that the balance wheel is on the dial. Oh, well, that's a little better. So this better. is like a specially made movement that is not totally skeletonized, but the whole thing is movement, mm. and it makes a lot more sense with yeah. this shaped case, I yeah. think. It's Com- a beautiful watch in person. It's weird. You gotta you gotta right? want you gotta want weird. You gotta it's kinda like the square watch, you know, yeah, where some yeah, people yeah. are like, eh, I can't wear a square. This is a millinery case also? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So we have a mo- we have a more normal uh millinery case. In fact it's I think that one says millinery on the back of it, doesn't yes, it? Yes it does. This is the more normal one. Which all right. This is a ladies watch, right? I can imagine. I don't know if this was a ladies watch. I mean it's if it it, it would make a good ladies it watch. It would I at think. this point. It's yeah. got kind of like a military dial as well. It's it's I don't yeah like what does it right? want to be? Is it it's, dressy? Yeah. Is it is it a is it a pilot watch? Is it like a ladies watch? I don't I don't know what it wants to be. Yeah, I don't know. Ultimately, for me, it's like Royal Oak or bust. Really, that's kind of where I'm at with this. I like the Jewel Audemars. Yeah, I like the Jewel Audemars, but I love the Royal Oak as well. Royal Oak's awesome. I I, I just something about it like the way it sits. Wait, did I, did I try? Is this the white dial? No, uh, white dial answer. right here. This one is this one's light. This white dial is very light. It's thin. Yeah. And uh, it's like, oh man, it looks so small on me. It looks weird. <laughs> I couldn't rock. I couldn't rock this one. But the so that one. Yeah. I wonder if that one's the new. I don't know. You want to tell me it's the new movement? In the meantime, another friend. I I told my other friend that I was doing a show on AP, and he said, "Do you want to see something funny?" I bought this in Thailand, and this is like a really high-end fake offshore. And what I found really neat about it is it's got this pressed carbon case. So I wanted to bring it for you because this is a fake. But honestly, I, I think there. I think he would. I th- I think he would. This would fool me. I mean, I don't know everything about these, that- or you're even. All that much, but you are something of an expert. Can you make it a little brighter? All right, it's a little dark. Uh, there you go, perfect. Um, all right, can you point out all the fakery on this fake? Because to me, this is a pretty fucking good fake, yeah. actually. From from the dial side, this thing is really it's really on yeah, point. This, Let me see if is, I can get a picture of the. Uh... Someone spent a lot of money making this watch. Okay, it was not. Like a cheap, just throw it together with random pieces. Everything is really like. Where's the real picture here? What's pretty a good, well what's engineered. A good, what's a good picture to use? Uh, this that one right one? here. Yeah. Okay, that's perfect. Hang on. <laughs> okay, so here, so the the here's one the real. thing that stands out to me on the dial side, real fake, is going to be fake. Your date, the date, the size of the date. Yeah. And the reason of for that is that one of them has a movement with a module on the top. Uh huh. Here's your, which here's is the a real fake one zoomed in, and then here's the real. Okay. So the real one mm-hmm. has the AP movement with a Dubois de Pra module on top. Okay. The and fake the f- one has an Eta chronograph movement, which is an integrated chronograph movement. Huh. So there's no module in the fake one. How interesting. Yeah. But man, is that close. Wait, right? can you can you spin that you want date? Me to set it to eight? I want to set it to eight. Yeah, Let's I think we this. need to get it exact. But like, I don't know. If when you hold that thing, it feels pretty expensive. Like that's like not it's like not a bad is that on? Okay. So here's your here's a reel. Oh, oh, wait, I'm hold off. on. There we go. Oh, the eight well the the number eight looks completely different. Hit, here, wait. Did we get out of focus? You got, fo- again? You got a little out of focus again. But the number eight is a completely different uh, font. Yeah. So, real, see how wide the eight is, and then fake, it's a little narrow eight. Exactly. But man, you got to look hard for that. Right. You got to look really hard for that. And also, does the AP logo slightly different? It's a little bigger on the real one, isn't it? Bit real, fake. Yeah. It's a little bigger on the real one, too, right? Yep. The f- 
Wow. It's and the and so and on the on the sub dial, the second sub dial, the uh the minor seconds are a little small a little thinner and yeah. sharper. Right, a little shorter. <laughs> Pretty fucking good fake though. It's very, That's very a, at first Very glance, that would con- that would fool. Oh yeah, basically anybody. If somebody, if I saw that on somebody's wrist, even if they showed it to me yeah. on their wrist, I would not suspect it was fake. Look and pull, flip the back over. Let's because it actually has a display back with a reasonably well finished, you know, movement. It's not. Yeah. It's not a. It's not an immediate. Or, or to you, maybe to me, it's not an immediate giveaway. Yeah. Is where would you look on the back to look for an immediate giveaway? So they did a nice job on the oscillating weight. Yeah. But if you look through the oscillating weight, you the- can see it's an Eta movement. Um, and it's a pretty recognizable one. It's the Valjo 7750. Which actually, I mean it's not a bad movement. It comes in like a like it comes in a watch that would be like two or three thousand yeah. bucks. Oh yeah, Easy. you'll get that you'll get that in watches up to like ten grand. Yeah. You'll you'll <laughs> find it in IWCs, you'll find it in Brightlings. Um, big brands, it's a really solid chronograph watch or chronograph wow. movement. Um, but the AP oscillating weight is like a dead ringer for what would be on the the actual that's AP crazy, movement. Man. That's so that's so yeah. funny. I so, mean, I'm not pro fakes by any means, but like I can recognize someone who's done a good job at something. Yeah, <laughs> whoever and made this, that did a pretty good job. <laughs> yeah, and that's one of the reasons you want to stick with. Like someone like Crown and Caliber, who they're checking yeah, the yeah, watches yeah. because if you went to get this second hand, uh, or just buy it from eBay or yeah. Craigslist or wherever you might find one for sale. Yeah, you might not realize until you took it to get it serviced that holy yeah. shit, I bought a fake. Yeah, and yeah, it's a valuable fake, maybe like a fifteen hundred dollar fake or whatever. Yeah. But fake is fake. Yeah, you know, fake fake will always be fake. Yeah. Wow. So that's one, uh, huh? one other thing that yes. I noticed on this. Okay, what do you got? So the Wait. case middle. Right here, mm-hmm. that ha- that's supposed to be forged carbon, is actually metal. So it's some kind of like a like a coating. application that they put on top of the steel. That's that so looks, funny. It has the the graphic that looks like forged carbon. That's so funny. It's like yeah. when people have cars, you know, and they and they wrap a panel With in a carbon, carbon yeah. fiber. It's like that. That's fucking great. That's yeah. funny, man. Well, thank you to anonymous friend number two for lending me that for the day. That right. provides some good entertainment. Uh, before we get out of here, quick update on this. Last week, uh, the Rolex episode, Carl convinced me of the virtues of the Rolex Explorer yes. uh, versus the GMT. Uh, and I, I got this white dial Explorer as a demo. I've been wearing it for like a week and a half. And I've worn it every day, and I love it. And I am trading my GMT in to Crown and <laughs> Caliber, uh, plus a little bit of cash or possibly another watch for a pair of these, a nice. black and a white dial. Because the Explorer 2 is what's up. Yeah. I didn't want to go back to Rolex, but I just wanted to give an update because uh, I am wearing the, the Explorer 2 white dial. I fucking love this thing. It fits my wrist really nice. Yeah. It's and that in the orange hand adds Orange that hand is extra cool. Pop. And as soon as I sign the papers, I'm going to get that Everest orange uh, knockoff Oyster Flex. Yeah. That's going to be hot for summer. Yeah. And then I'll keep the black dial on steel. Nice. That's cool, man. Uh, should we... Pl- well, I hope... By- next week, we'll have... Uh, We'll have pictures and stuff from our open house or your open house that I'll be at. Cars and watches, watch stories. I don't know where are they going to air the watch stories on CrownandCaliber.com. Should I be guess, yeah, right? should be on their blog. Um, I would imagine. Right, all of the watches uh, featured on today's show, with the exception of the fake, will be available at Crown and Caliber by the time you've seen this. So if you're into one of these Royal Oaks, someone should buy the perpetual. That shit is fire. Yeah, I'm all about that. Uh, and of course, thank you to Crown and Caliber for sending us these watches. Anything else? Uh, Alan one, Edmonds. I have one interesting thing about AP oh, that I think people oh, would like to know. Absolutely, please. What do you they got? They started with complicated watches, and yeah. they've been making the Grand Complication watch. Oh, we didn't they've really made talk about least, the modern one, did we? Yeah, yeah. They've Let's made at least on one of them every single year since they started. Where is uh, the um the uh? What I really like is the exploded view. Because yeah. that shit is crazy. Here's a good picture. Let me open this because this blew my mind when you first showed me this. 1,500 so check pieces this out. in the movement. Oh, wow. We have zoomed in. I have zoomed in a too much. This is so cool. Um, 
I don't even know where to start, but this. <laughs> yeah. So, like, all right, how many pieces does your watch have in it? My watch has a, about 150 pieces in it. Okay. The entire watch, the including entire the watch. case parts and everything. Okay, so 150 pieces for your watch. How many pieces would like a, a chronograph, you know, a Speedmaster or something have? You're looking at like 200. Okay. How about uh, like a split seconds? Split seconds, still somewhere around there. Okay. How about like my IWC Perpetual? Perpetual, you're probably getting up to like 250, 300. Oh, that, I thought I would have thought more. Okay. And so, and then to jump to a grand complication, it's 1,500 pieces. Jesus Christ. In the grand complication. Didn't you tell me that there's like one dude in the world who can service these things and make them? There's a few. However, if you order a grand complication or purchase a grand complication mm -hmm. and you send it in for service, it's going to make its way back to the guy that made it. At period. What period. If he, what Unless if, he's retired or What if or he's retired away. or dead? Then what? Then it's going to go to his protege, who he trained, Yeah. Um, and he will work on it. But it's all recorded. They know mm -hmm. exactly who made which one. Uh, but something really cool is that they have made at least one every single year since they started. There was no time where they shut down operations like many other companies did. Uh, they were always able to sell one because they were known for it. And if you had money, and no matter what year it was, yeah, yeah. Great Depression, whatever, there Someone was somebody who was one. doing well, and yeah. they bought one. How much is one if I wanted to buy one today? Today? Last I saw, as far as published pricing, they were around $800,000 for a steel one. You know, in... in I mean, obviously that's crazy, but like you know, you got you got these RM watches, and you know you've got like oh you know, here you go, just pull up Google Shopping, no problem, <laughs> a million bucks. There you go, seven hundred, six hundred, eight hundred. This one right here is gorgeous. That, that one, I I have held that in person. You know this exact with that watch. watch in person. I know that exact watch. Well, it's a steal at uh, only six hundred and forty-one thousand dollars used. Right? Wow. There was a time when How they were so... How crazy is that you can get these on Google Shopping? Yeah. I mean, I mean this is like... There was a wow. time when they were so high in demand that they were over a million dollars new. Wow. Just because there's only like five guys working in that workshop that can make them. That is crazy. And it takes... it got to be at least a year to make one. Yeah. I mean, if I order one, is it, does it take a year or two to get? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. And they, there's no such thing as making one on spec, right? Every one is made to order. No, there are some that are made and then and make it out into the market. Yeah. However, if you're buying that watch, you don't want one that somebody else touched totally. and played with. Totally. You I, want I, one made special for you. Yeah, right? this is the Acura NSX problem. They <laughs> sent a bunch of them to the dealers, but everyone went, if I'm buying a $150,000 Acura, I want to choose the color. I don't want to buy one yeah. off the fucking floor. Yeah, totally. Grand comps are crazy. I've seen one yeah. uh, in person, and I was like, like it was like a skeletonized dial one, and I was like, Jesus. Yeah. You know, just blows your mind. Right. So many parts. So many parts. I'd be so I'd be like I'd be I don't know. I mean, I guess if I had a million dollars to spend on a watch, I wouldn't be scared to service it, would I? No. <sighs> Crazy. What do you how often do you service one of those? Uh it would be the same service interval. It's it's based on the oil. Uh, and the oil oh, the oils break down at a, at a specific yeah, way. Ten yeah, yeah. years under ideal uh -huh. conditions. Okay. You get out of these oils, and you would have to keep this on a winder. You would want to, yeah, yeah, because it's a perpetual calendar. calendar yep. Yeah, that's craziness. Yeah. Well, AP is dope. Their watches are dope. They don't make a lot of variety, and sometimes when they veer off the standard, it it's can a little, get weird. It's a little <laughs> weird, but man, they they really figured out that Royal Oak formula that really works for them. Yeah. All right. Well, that's watch and listen. Thank you very much for listening and uh, or watching whatever it is you do. I hope I did a better job with the video today. Weisswatchcompany.com. Wait, let me go. I'll go back. Oh no, I just closed my own Instagram. But fuck my Instagram. Follow Cameron <laughs> Cameron M Weiss. Weisswatchcompany.com. Buy a watch from the man. He's having a baby. Yeah. He's got. He's now got an extra mouth to feed. All right. He needs the money. I'm just kidding. No. You, but yeah. No. But really. You I, bought could a, I could use the money. You bought a house. You're having a baby. You need to sell some right? watches, brother. It's been a been a wild year. I know. How exciting for you. And uh, we will see you next week on Watch and Listen. <laughs>